The sustained release of stress chemicals like cortisol can cause negative changes within the brain. But the good news is that chronic stress is reversible. I'm Dr. Yuande Pierce. I'm a neuroscience researcher who studies the many different functions of the brain. Today we'll be talking about the science of stress on the brain and the body. Let's get started. Stress isn't just encountering tigers, lions and bears. Stresses can also include pain, inflammation, hunger, cold, or even strong emotions. And stress is not categorically bad. In the short term, stress allows us to immediately respond to threats and survive. It also allows you to respond to situations that don't actually endanger our lives, but require extra energy and focus, like competitive sports or public speaking. Our stress system, as it's come to be known, includes multiple brain regions which together detect stresses and assess the situation, so figuring out if this is a real or a potential threat, and then initiating a response. You can think of stresses as falling into two different categories, physical or psychological. Physical stresses tend to evoke subconscious or autonomic stress responses involving the brainstem, which regulates your heartbeat and breathing, and the hypothalamus, which maintains your body's internal balance or homeostasis. Next are psychological stresses, which are quite common in our modern world. For example, social evaluative stresses like giving a speech or situations when the self feels like it could be negatively judged by others elicit both physical and cognitive stress responses. They're usually perceived in an anticipatory way, creating anxiety, and may heavily rely on limbic structures, which process emotion and memory. The identification of a stressor, whether physical or psychological, leads to the co-activation of two major pathways within the stress system. Once these two systems are activated, they generate a coordinated response that starts within seconds, priming your body for instant action. The sympathetic adrenomedula, or SAM axis, is the route through which the brain directs the sympathetic branch of the autonomic nervous system and triggers the adrenal glands to secrete noradrenaline and norepinephrine, chemicals that result in acute bodily and cognitive processes like increased heart rate and alertness, sharper focus and attention, all of which allow us to face whatever the challenge is. The hypothalamus pituitary adrenal, or HPA axis, is the pathway that involves the secretion of another class of hormones, such as the primary stress hormone cortisol. The HPA axis doesn't kick in as quickly as the SAM, but acts to amplify and prolong the secretory response and return everything back to normal by acting on specific biological targets in the brain and body. These chemicals, along with many others, promote physiological and behavioral changes in order to deal with stresses and restore balance in the body, which is the overall goal of the stress response. Unlike acute stress, which helps us deal with stresses in the short term and return balance within the brain and body, chronic stress can become maladaptive or not helpful. For example, Chronic stress increases the level of neuronal activity and the number of neural connections in the amygdala, or the fifth center. But the good news is that chronic stress is reversible. There is evidence that supports activities like exercise and meditation reversing the effects of cortisol in the brain. Meditating regularly can help create new pathways and patterns in the brain, making mindfulness-based therapy, or MBT, a great tool for reducing stress and anxiety. A meta-analysis of more than 200 studies on MBT's impact found that mindfulness showed large and clinically significant effects in treating anxiety, and the gains were maintained at follow-up. So those who had mild, moderate, or severe levels of anxiety at pre-treatment all found decreased levels of anxiety post-treatment. And despite the limitations of measuring consistent quality and parameters across dozens of studies, the meta-analysis concluded that MBT is moderately to largely effective across the board, regardless of age or duration of the at-home practice. This means that mindfulness is widely applicable, no matter how you practice. So, if you're looking for ways to combat stress and anxiety, I highly recommend cultivating a consistent meditation practice. By doing so, you can strengthen your mental muscles that will in turn help your brain and overall feelings of well-being. I'm Dr. Yuande Pierce, and thank you so much for watching. For more guided support on this topic, 
Check out the Reframe Stress Collection in the app now.